Turns out I am dreadful at editing autumn photographs. Uh, this video we head over to Nat Dyer Viaduct in the South, uh, South Wales and meet up with a mate called Martin Evans, fantastic photographer, do check him out on Instagram, he is a really really nice guy and a great great photographer. After the video we'll have a look at the images and see exactly how I'll get on editing them but uh, yeah really really nice place if you do go to Nant Dyer Viaduct don't go alone it's really quite dangerous down there, dead dead slippy so yeah do take care, I'll see you after the video. Third play, this is awesome. This is really cool. Really cool. Lethal. <laughs> Lethal, but really cool. Wow, that log down there is phenomenal. Huge. Absolutely phenomenal. These dapple of autumn colour. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Autumn colour coming over there as well, blocking off the, the pylons. <laughs> wow, really cool. Fantastic location, really, really, really nice. Really nice. Look at this woods down here. See that? Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Um, Martin is just setting up a shot and I've wandered around five or so minutes with the uh, X-T4 handheld doing some um, different different compositions, different angles. Oh, what's this down here? Um, and I've not really seen anything I like just yet. So I thought I'd just take a break away from it and wander around, see if I can find something else, see, see if anything else looks good from a distance. It's a wonderful place and obviously the viaduct in the background is a huge important part of the image. So that's gotta be in the photograph. It's just I don't know, it just means that it's so wide and getting something that looks really sort of balanced in the frame, it just looks, because it's so wide, it's difficult to simplify the image and I always try and simplify my shots. I always try and get it so it's obvious for whoever's looking at the image to know what they're looking at. Now, uh, Martin's got a composition in mind, he's going really low um, with these rocks and um, I'm gonna see how he, uh, <laughs> see how he pulls that off. Um, I think he's probably got a good, the best option for here, but I think my, my shot is going to be on from the waterfall in the middle. Um, I just think there's too much going on, and when you put the camera low, you miss that waterfall in the middle. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a step back and wander around five minutes, and uh, I wish I bought a coffee, <laughs> and have a look, I'll reassess the situation, and see if I've seen anything. Uh, but yeah, proving it's a really, really nice location, but it's not an easy one. <laughs> this does look nice. Looks lethal, but it really does look pretty. That tree is unbelievable. Oh, I bet that made a thud when it came down. Um, now Martin spotted this shot because when I came to it, I walked past this because I thought this, this rock would make a nice foreground, but then in my eye it cut through the frame too much, so I decided to walk past it. And I went down there and took some uh, wide angle shots pointing up. Um, but actually watched, looked at Martin's pictures and it actually works really, really well. And well, I've, tried to, I've decided to do something similar, so I pinched his idea a bit. Instead of his camera pointing that way across there, I'm going to go wide and have, have this as a big feature because I really, really like the green and everything. But I'm going to focus that, so I've got the, the rock sharp there and the waterfall, which is on the right-hand third over there, which should be really, really nice. Um, I've decided, though, to cut out the viaduct from the scene as well because just to make this more about just the, the nice autumn colours and the waterfall, which is perfectly on the third. Polarizer, which I just need to check. Polarizer is on full. Um, and I've decided as well to omit that tree, I don't know if you can see that, that tree out of the frame and just keep it, then obviously you've got the colours of the leaves coming over the waterfall which kind of frames and balances and, and, and brings the light back down, well that's really nice. Focus stack on here, what we do is we'll focus on the foreground and foot first and what I do is put my finger in front just to show the camera where I'm focusing 
obviously set, then take a shot without that. And then take another shot, focusing on the background. My finger then showing the, showing the camera where, the, where I'm focusing. And then take another shot without my finger in. Very important, remember to do that. <laughs> and then um, end the scene by putting your hand in front of it so you know that the next photographs aren't part of that stack. So there we are. F11, one sixth of a second, ISO 200 with a polarizer. Absolutely beautiful. I really enjoy walking around with the camera, handheld, exploring, practicing compositions. I find it liberating and freeing instead of using the tripod all the time. But I am limited by the exposure of the IBIS in the X-T4 and I regret not putting the tripod down for some of the photographs I actually found. I wish I'd used the correct shutter instead of the 1 8th of a second which I'm limited with the IBIS in the camera. It was a last minute decision to take this panoramic image from the front of the waterfall. I quickly put my camera on the levelling base, squared up a tripod and it might be my shot of the day. Can you believe that drone survived? It's funny because we did another uh, photo shoot about two or three days later and I crashed the drone again. <laughs> I still survived. I don't know. don't know how I still got that. And I slipped over on that location about 10 or 15 times as well. Really, really was dangerous. Thank you very much for Martin uh, meeting me there and showing me around the place. They're really, really awesome. Um, I hope you like the pictures. Now, I'm going to be honest, I really struggled editing them and I'm not one to spend a long time editing photographs. I literally, I live by the 30 second rule. If I can't edit a photograph in 30 seconds, I'll walk away from it. Um, and those photographs I found really challenging because each one probably took me a good 10 or 15 minutes, which to me is an awful long time and I start, lo start losing interest very, very quickly. So um, I actually, for the video, deleted all the ones I did originally and I literally did a 30 second edit on them because I just felt that Autumn photographs seem to look fake <laughs> if you do much to them to balance the colour because we'll go through them now and have a look at them but to balance colour so you've got like green leaves in the top or yellow leaves in the foreground just to make it look like it works and make it look like it's it, they're working together is really really difficult and I think because um, a lot of the a lot of the colours that were there were kind of opposite so there wasn't a lot in the way of autumn colour in the top half of the image it was only in the bottom so I think editing them for me was a real struggle and especially because it was low light as well so we'll dive on in and <laughs> have a look at the pictures and as you'll see in the end I didn't really do much to edit them but we'll have a look at them now anyway. Actually, before I get into this, what did you think to the second camera option? I thought I'd try talk, one camera to talk to and another camera that shows what I'm looking at and stuff like that. Did it work? <laughs> it wasn't easy to edit at all. That footage is dreadful on the Osmo, but yeah, low light, it sucked. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of that. And I know, don't want any comments on my drone flying abilities. I know they suck as well. <laughs> Right then, so we know that 50% of an image is in the editing and um, yeah, so basically you've got to do, a, if you can get a great, great image on location, if you come back you can easily ruin it in, with, with Lightroom or whatever. So um, when I feel that happens, I literally take a step back and just do next to nothing. So very, very importantly with, especially with Fuji files, what I find with Fuji files um, in, the, in the editing is the white balance. So over here, I really do feel that a massive part of the editing is the white balance. If you get that wrong, the, the, the pictures can look just dreadful. So if we look at the before and after on this image, you see the white balance is really blue. It's really, really dark. I mean, I was exposed for the highlights. You see the, the histogram 
I've only gone up half a stop, so I would have been around about, if I come down, I would have been about there anyway, so I've not gone up much um, to get the exposure to the right. But obviously it's very, very bright here in the, in the waterfall and very, very dark in the foreground, so you can see how much dynamic range, how much pressure is put on your sensor, and this is why it's important, obviously, to, to expose to the right. I can hear a lot of you screaming at the camera, say, at the TV, saying, <laughs> you know, I should have bracket, bracketed the shot, and I just... I just don't, I just don't tend to. I try, to, try, to, try and avoid bracketing if I can. But I think it came out okay, um, if we just get rid of that. I think there's a lot of green, there's a lot of orange, and it just looks, because of, because of I know how dark that foreground was all around here, should really be really, really pitch black. To me, it just looks too, it still looks HDR, even though, if you look over to the sliders on the right, I've lifted the shadows up, uh, probably a bit too much, actually. I've not lifted up mega, though, you know, I've not gone crazy. Um, and I'm trying to keep it all looking natural. You know, it, it, I find autumn, autumn um, images really, really difficult to get natural because you want to emphasize the autumn colors. You want to make them more warm than they perhaps are, you know, but you've got greens to think of. And um, when you start warming up oranges, that's one thing. But when you start warming up greens, it can look really, look really, really messy. So basically all I did was chuck this in uh, Photoshop and then just literally brighten the leaves up a little bit. There is a grad over the top just to darken that. So if I press that, you can see um, all that's doing is darkening the uh, the top part of the image just to bring the exposure down and balance the exposure from top to bottom. But uh, And then the opposite in the bottom there. So on the bottom left, I've brightened that area up. So you can see it's just a, a little bit of a grad to brighten that up. But that's pretty much all that was, th that was doing. Um, literally, if you look down here, uh, dropped the contrast a little bit because it was so so heavy it was really really dark i think in the next video i've got coming up we were outside um, i was with my mate neil and it was really really good light soft soft light and i still struggled editing autumn pictures with that just because of the greens and oranges and i find that they <laughs> they kind of fight each other but yeah i, I like I, I like the photograph i like the sort of com uh, composition is okay um but i just struggled with the editing i just find that the green and orange just sort of clash um, but yeah, I mean, it's okay. And I think again, that it looks, I mean, what I should have done, I've, I've got the vibrance up a little bit there. I should have perhaps dropped that down and probably desaturated. I think I like Martin's edit more. I think Martin's looks a lot softer. I'm much, in fact, I do it. I like edit, uh, Martin's edit a lot more. He very, very, he enjoys his editing. So I know he spends a long, long time editing, but, um, yeah, I think it just looks, I don't know. I mean, that just looks fake to me. I just don't like it. I, I don't know what, I, I mean, I've not done anything to, if you look at the, let's have a look at the before and after of that. Yeah, the white balance is dreadful anyway <laughs> from the raw. So um, yeah, I don't feel like I've done much to it. I just feel like it's naff, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know, we'll learn, we'll learn. The lighting is, is going to be key. So um, again, before and after. Um, just a correction. I mean, what I do here with waterfall shots, I always go down to the um, selection of colour here and drop the blues. So if I reset that, I'll always get this marker here. You see how blue that water is? And just slide that down, just pull out that colour out of the water so I've got like a nice neutral colour. And that's, what, that's literally all I do. The rest of it, as you can see, there isn't really much going on. Drop the highlights just so that we're not clipping the water. And um, actually some contrast on that, which perhaps doesn't help. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all right. I think that just, the, for me, it just looks, still looks HDR. I mean, look at the, look at the level, the, the sliders, the, there's not much going on there at all. And it just looks, looks a bit HDR. So yeah, um, I do, but that's okay. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if it was more awesome color, maybe if it was less green, I'd like it a bit better. A bit better. As you can see, this is the panoramic, so we had to we had to Photoshop these corners in. But again, not much going on. Just lifting them, just lifting the the shadows a little bit. Try not to get a HDR looking image. Of course, you're in danger of that. Obviously, I've had to because let's have a look at this. So we're exposed to the right. So there's our exposure to the right. I should have metered for more of the waterfall. This. You know, this would have turned into about 30 photographs if I had bracketed this because it's a one, two, three, four, five image put vertical vertical pano. So um, obviously the histogram is metered for this white area here, which is a bit of a mistake. I perhaps I should have let that go a bit further to the right because I've gone a stop and a half to compensate for that error in the exposure. So I've only gone for half a second. Perhaps I should have gone to F8 
uh, or lifted the ISO up a little bit, but it's okay. So it just looks flat and HDR looking. I don't know. Let me know what you think. If you've got any tips for editing, yeah, drop your tips down. If you've got any tips for editing autumn colours, and I think the greens, perhaps if I should have dropped, if I come down to the greens here, perhaps drop the greens. Actually, it does look a bit better, doesn't it? Just by dropping the greens, I think. Yeah, dropping the greens, it doesn't look so... Because I've lifted the oranges, haven't I, to make the oranges pop in the foreground. Lifted, you can lift the yellows a little bit, I suppose. But just, oh, that's actually not bad now. Just by dropping that green slider. Yeah, but to me, it still looks a bit fake. It doesn't look as clean and honest as if you were, you know. I don't know, I've seen other people, other photographers seem to do a better job of editing uh, autumn colours. So I've got a few videos coming up with autumn. So hopefully I'll have had a bit more practice by then and the images look a bit better. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, dead, dead important uh, with greens is the white balance. If anybody's got an idea, with what I normally do with white balance, just to give you an idea, I normally click on this uh, eyedropper tool here and then find something grey because obviously with video and with everything you want like a, a neutral grey. So I always go around about there, click that and then that will give me my white balance. So that's how I find an accurate white balance because with greens, obviously, if you get the white balance wrong, it can look absolutely atrocious. If you go too warm, it can look atrocious as well when it when it comes around. So yeah, just just click on that eyedropper tool, find something that you should you know should be a neutral grey. Uh, like I've kind of lost it now, and I there that should have been a neutral grey. So that that that's a starting point for white balance for me. Anyway, I'll let you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Any autumn editing tips, please let me know. I'm all ears. And uh, yeah, let me know which is your favourite image. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.